go. And I have been unmuted. Good. So I'm going to bring us into. I you were unmuted. There we go. Um, into announcements again. I remind folks that if you don't have now would be the time to grab a cuppa and a hunka, as we will share in um, our meal later. Make sure you have a candle nearby and your rock, your heart rock nearby for this morning. Um, I'm going to remind you of just a couple of things. One is that the Bible study on Wednesday nights is going great. There are 11 people coming out for the Bible study, so it's really a rollicking time. It runs an hour, so 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. Please feel free to come to that. Children's time this week was done by the seagulls. They were out in their backyard and um, Matthew and Sean and Sarah Siegel brought us a wonderful children's time. So if you haven't made it there, we invite you to, to head there and check it out. That's, you can find the link on our webpage. Next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. So everybody, you need to wear red, maybe have a red candle with you. However, whatever, you want to have red present as we celebrate Pentecost Sunday. Uh, there's been a lot of announcements this week. I'm just going to take a moment in this announcement time. There's the president declared that churches are essential services and should be open. And Cuomo said churches can open in a limited way. Um, the bishop has issued a statement here. So I'm going to read just little bits of it. Most of you that are on email will have received this, but I'm going to just lift out a few things. So he says, the president announced that all churches would be declared essential services and gave them permission to open this weekend. This directive was given with no guidance. The bishop has given clear guidance and direction. One, we will continue to live out of our theological understandings of the Christian faith, as well as the principles of doing no harm to others, and our mission to provide safe places for all people to gather when the time is right. Our United Methodist churches will not be permitted to open this weekend. Our churches will open on a regional basis when advanced preparation is done, certification is granted, and final permission is given by the district superintendent's office in consultation with the bishop's office. Each church within the New York Annual Conference is under specific direction to begin work on completing the necessary steps for reopening as provided in the document New York Annual Conference COVID-19 guidelines for church reopening. So the bishop will be hosting a webinar this coming Tuesday, May 26th, at 10 a.m. for clergy and another one at 5 p.m. for laity, where more specific information will be shared. I've already attended a preliminary webinar, and I will attend again on Tuesday. We have several of our lay leaders also attending the Tuesday webinar. This is, the bishop says, this is not the time to find loopholes or detours for the guidance we have clearly provided. If you have any questions or concerns, please contact your district superintendent. So I will lift up, we've heard that um, a church that opened for Mother's Day, not one of ours, but a church that opened for Mother's Day had 180 people in attendance. And the next day, one of the people who had been in attendance was tested positive for COVID-19. This is why we are not rushing to open until we can find the ways to make sure that we are operating in as safe a fashion as possible. Um, and again, in April, in Sacramento County, 71 people connected to a single church became infected. I don't want any one of you to get sick from coming to church. So we are forming a protocol planning and reopening team and we'll work through the guidelines that have been issued and will prepare us for the day when we may open safely. 
okay? It's not that we don't want to be together, it's that we don't want to be together in a harmful way. So know and trust that we are working toward that day, but I'm not gonna risk any one of you. Having said that, we have been celebrating Easter for the entire season. And next week, Pentecost is the last week of the Easter season. But just like Jesus has been reminding his disciples since the resurrection, this is not the end of his presence with the world, but the beginning of how we will carry his heart within ours. And so it is. As we gather together today, and every time that we gather together, physically, virtually, in small groups, or simply together in our memory of one another, Christ is still with us. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the good will of all the people. We create a temple of worship in our hearts that connects us across boundaries, distance, and time. As we share this worship, we will stay connected. At the heart of the matter, we are connected through the spirit that makes us one in love. And so we connect as we listen to the um there we go uh as we listen to the prelude that has been brought to us by helen this week let's see there we go <laughs>
And we're going to center our hearts as one to begin. Let's take a deep breath together. I invite you to place your hand on your heart and let's lightly tap together in a slow heartbeat rhythm. Holy living God, heartbeat of creation, help us to take this time to center on you, for you made us. You gave us life. You continue to be with us every moment. Every breath, every step hear this assurance from god be still O oh heart you're not alone your beat is shared with me come now and calm and center here your mind secure and free now let's take another deep breath, making sure that our shoulders and any tension that we feel in our body is letting go with the breath. Let's take another breath. Mm. Nice. Now I invite you to pick up your heart stone, touch the surface and let that touch remind us that God's touch is within us, between us, and around us. As close and real as this object in our hands is right now, is how close love is to us always. Let us imagine letting go of our worries for now, into God's heart of love. We offer a prayer of letting go. Into your care we offer now our worries, fears, and strife. We turn to you and know you're near, your light, our love and life. Now we place our heart can our heart stones near our candles and we light our candles. And there's our candles on our dancing person candlestick and the light from the conference that connects us with the other churches are there. And now we will join in singing our opening hymn, God is here.
are witnesses to the power of drawing together for the sustenance that our bodies and hearts need. So let us bless our meal by praying this repeat after me prayer. Ever present God. Ever present God. We gather in your name. We gather in your name. Invited by Jesus. Invited by Jesus. Bound together with your spirit. Bound together with your spirit. In union with each other. Feed our bodies and our spirits with your comforting presence so that we might be your comfort to others. Bless this food and break open our hearts. Bless this drink and pour out your love. And pour out your love. Amen. Amen. And now I invite you to pick up a plate of food or a cup of drink and let us say the one word that is at the heart of the matter in every blessing that we do at our tables, repeating after me, grateful. Grateful. Let us begin to break bread while we break open the word in our scriptures. Today, we commemorate the moment when the disciples witnessed Jesus leaving this physical world. He had spent some quality time with them, helping them understand more about their faith and the continued mission that they must now carry on in the world. He asked them to encourage people to a change of heart, to believe in hope and life and love that was his message on earth. As we often do when we take our leave from someone we love, Jesus blessed his followers. And I think Lynn is our reader this morning. Jesus said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law from Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He said to them, this is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and a change of heart and life for the forgiveness of sins must be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Look, I'm sending to you what my Abba, God promised, but you are to stay in the city until you have been furnished with heavenly power. He led them out as far as Bethany, where he lifted his hands and blessed them. As he blessed them, he left them and was taken up to heaven. They worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem, overwhelmed with joy. And they were continuously in the temple, praising God. We've been reading some of the apostles' letters that circulated among the early churches. They read these letters as they gathered for meals, just as we have been doing. Here is an excerpt from a letter sent to an early Christian community. We can imagine it being written for us as a community that needs prayers, that needs a spirit of wisdom. Since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, this is the reason that I don't stop giving thanks to God for you when I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Sovereign of Glory, will give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation that makes God known to you. I pray that the eyes of your heart will have enough light to see what is the hope of God's call, what is the richness of God's glorious inheritance among believers, and what is the overwhelming greatness of God's power that is working among us believers. This power is conferred by the energy of God's powerful strength. God's power was at work in Christ when Christ raised him from the dead and set him at God's right side in the heavens, far above every ruler and authority and power and angelic power, any power that might be named not only now but in the future. God put everything under Christ's feet and made him head of everything in the church, which is his body. His body, the church, is the fulfillment of Christ, who fills everything in every way. To be the body of Christ 
as the church is to see the world through the eyes of Jesus, to see through the eyes of love. As Christ's body here on earth, we try to create the same conditions of love that he did while he was here on earth. We hope that the eyes of our hearts can be continually opened as the disciples were that day of Jesus' ascension so that we can be the best representation of his love here on earth. Perhaps we can see the ascension with Christ as an elevation or heightening of our gratitude and of our commitment to do good in the world. That heightening of gratitude, um, an example of that that came to me as I was preparing for this Sunday is from back in another lifetime of mine. I was probably in my late 20s, early 30s, and I was driving down the road on Staten Island, heading from wherever to wherever, and I saw this woman, Diana Brown. She was in her 80s, and she was laboring along the road. Well, I'm heading in that way. I don't have anybody in the car. I'm not in a particular rush. I said, all right, all right, I'll stop and see if I can offer her a ride. I kind of did it begrudgingly because I'm a Christian. That's what you're supposed to do. And she's a member of my church. So I pulled over and I said, Diana, would you like a ride? She accepted the ride and climbed in and just started giving thanks to God. And as I said, I did this kind of begrudgingly. This is not striking me as a particular God moment so much as a, okay, I'll do what I have to do. She kept thanking God for me and how just when she was feeling that she wasn't going to be able to walk the rest of the way home, that God sent someone to pick her up, to give her a ride. That was such an example of someone who so trusted in God and believed in God and knew that God was in her life, that she could look at this person, me, and see God in action. That lived with me for all of these years as a reminder of, of how we should be approaching, how we should be looking at life, and how often I forget to look at life that way. It is a reminder that God loves us and cares for us, and we are so gifted. Not even in material things, which we are, because we're not going to bed hungry. But think of the people in your life that God has gifted you with. People that are still with you, the people that have called you up this week just to say, how you doing? How's it going? The people that you see on the street that care enough to put a mask on to keep you safe. And they nod and they smile beneath their mask as they go by six feet away. The people that were in your life as you were growing up who may be gone now, who were there for a moment, or who were there for years, that cared about your life. Another gift that I received as a high school student, I, my family fell apart. I lived with, uh, for one, two years, I lived with a pastor's family. And I would come home after school every day. Now there was a guy, I may have mentioned him before, Tom Wolf. sorry Glenn. Tom Wolf was the heartache. He was the man that I, he hasn't aged well, sadly. But he was the man 
And I loved Tom Wolfe. And I would come home after school and Jane Barton, the mother in this family that I lived with, she had four other ch children besides me. She had four children. I would come home, somehow I don't remember them being there, whether they didn't need it or whether she just knew that I needed it. She would have cookies and milk there and sit with me as either I would be over the moon on the fact that Tom Wolf smiled at me today. Life is ecstatic. Or I'd come home and be ready to crawl into my grave. Tom Wolf didn't even say hello. Life was over. What was even the point of living if Tom didn't even notice me? At my age now, I look back and I say, I don't know how she did that. I can't imagine sitting with someone and not saying to them, get over this. This has no meaning. But she didn't because she modeled the love of Christ. Christ loves us enough that whatever we bring to Christ, Christ accepts. Christ meets us where we are and loves us and hears us and hears what we need to share. Can we do the same? We're called to be the body of Christ. And I want you to know that both of the people that I have named died 30 or more years ago, but they still live on because they are the body of Christ in my life. What does it mean to look through the eyes of our hearts? How do we see things around us in a heightened way? When our level of love goes up, our level of appreciation and gratitude goes up as well. I invite you to look around you right now. What do you see in front of you that may be something or someone that you see every day, but that you could see with new eyes of gratitude? Let your gaze rest on at least three things or people in this moment. Ready? Got your three? Our theme scripture says, they ate food with glad and generous hearts. One way that we can be glad and generous is to share about how we are finding strength, hope, love, and peace in these days. Each week I challenge you to do this. I hope that you have indeed been doing this. This is part of breaking bread with each other as we break open our hearts to one another as well. So let's share today about a new way of seeing with our hearts, with an eye of heightened gratitude. What did you see when you looked around? And did looking at it with the eyes of a grateful heart offer you a new perspective? What else are you grateful for at this moment? What do you want to elevate in your commitment to make the world a better place. Let's take some time at our tables to talk about this question. I have an elevated sense of gratitude for. So if there's somebody sitting at home with you, you can talk with them. Uh, if you're alone and on the computer, you can converse in the chat bar with each other. And we're going to unmute the folks on the phone so that you may share with each other. You can also journal your answers and share with someone later. Also even invited to text someone and share what you have an elevated sense of gratitude for. And so those on the phone, 
Who's willing to answer that question? I have Ellen. I would you be willing to share? Or Betty White? Yes. Helen, I'm, you're still muted. Hang on. Let's get Betty and then we'll get Helen. Helen, Betty, what? No. I'm sorry. Pastor. What did you say it again? An elevated sense of gratitude. As you looked around, what did you see that gave you a sense of gratitude? Um, I have to say that uh, the people around me who weren't wearing masks for a long time when I was outside yesterday and today, those people all have masks on, so I thank God for that. Amen. Thank you. Helen, how about you? No. No? Okay. Ginny and Rick. Yes, I give uh, gratitude for my wonderful husband and his years of our good marriage. I, that's what I'm thankful for every minute of every day. Amen. I see Ro Umgelter. I'm grateful for a special woman that's in my life and I hope to spend the rest of my life with. Amen. And I have two folks on the phone, somebody at 821 and somebody at 820, the last three digits. Would either of you like to share? I'm not, oh, not hearing either of you folks. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to come back then into the main group, and I'm going to invite you, we're going to sing another song, it's Today in Your Presence. So the words are written by Ken Bible, but the tune is one that you should know. There we go. together because we're singing differently. We're putting the emphasis in different areas, hitting those notes differently, and we're going to have to practice our singing. So we come to the time of celebrations and concerns. I invite Kathy to unmute the screen. I can't unmute everyone. Are you able to do it? I'm sorry. Yep, got it. So, what are we praying for this day, folks? 
that the virus is going down and there's possible openings in Long Island on Wednesday. Amen. We give thanks. I'd like to draw attention to what everybody is thinking about Memorial Day and that it has to be spent on the TV, actually, to have part in blessing those who have lost their lives in wars everywhere, not only in the United States. Mm-hmm. And blessing those veterans who have come back either maimed or with post-traumatic stress. And uh, and those who have come back whole, too. Amen. Amen. We remember okay. those that have served. What else are we celebrating? Or are we lifting up this day? We're celebrating you who believe in us and pray for us and lead us in the right direction all the time. Amen. I like being celebrated. Today is the, um, it's the end of Ramadan for our Muslim brothers and sisters. It is E, I'm going to try and pronounce it, Eid al-Fatr, which is the festival of breaking the fast. Through Ramadan, they fast every day, eating just one meal late in the evening. Today is the breaking of the fast. It is the one day out of the year they are not allowed to fast. And so we um, join with them and wish them well. And Thursday, the Jewish holiday, Shavuot, begins. And that commemorates the giving of the Torah to the Jewish people on Mount Sinai. And they celebrate this by reading the Torah. So many celebrations in all our religions center around food. This is about the food for their soul and their spirit, the reading of their holy word. And so that starts on Thursday. What other celebrations or concerns? I have a concern. I'd like to have prayers for my grandson, Gerard, who is traveling with a group of kids from Ohio State to Baton Rouge, Louisiana, for a uh, water skiing camp. Pray that God (laughs) keeps him safe with the rest of the kids and has a safe journey back home to New York on Saturday. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. So we hold Gerard in our prayers this day. Thank you. I have and all of the kids that are traveling with him, that they'll remain safe. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. I have a concern for Michelle Antico, who had a fall this week, mm. um, dodging other joggers. She was walking. She's okay, but we like to think of our thrift shop volunteers at the same time as we're thinking of our church members. Amen. They too are part of our family. So prayers for Michelle. And that there's no lasting, that there's no residual pain or um, damage done. In the moment it feels like there's not, we pray that that's true and that she doesn't find that it's harder to move. Concerns for Helen Pushusi, Josephine Roselli, and Delucia and Jean passed mm-hmm. and praying for people to stay safe this Memorial Weekend. Thanks to all the health care workers, people delivering food, and to all the people that are keeping us all safe. Amen. 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 I like that. I'd like to offer a prayer up for my daughter, Katie, who's in her 30th week of her pregnancy, which has been very difficult. Things are going well, and we wish that we have a a healthy, happy baby soon. Amen. Amen. So prayers for Katie. Um, And I lift up all those that that are pregnant at this time. It is a frightening time. It is a time where people are afraid and then if they do get the virus that puts great stress on them. So just prayers for all those that are pregnant at a time of a world pandemic. 
I pray for my neighbor who will be a grandmother and her daughter is due any day with the baby. Amen. 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 I would lift up the situation in Florida. Um, Alejandro Ripley, nine-year-old boy who was who has died. It is assumed that he was killed by his mother, who at first reported that he had been kidnapped by two black men. So there's so many layers of brokenness in this story. I pray for all the people that are involved in this place and in this loss. And may I say this to pray for her as well, that mm -hmm. whatever made her do this, that uh, she reflects and is given the capacity by God to reflect on that. Mm -hmm. Amen. And pray for that young man that drowned in the surf with people trying to save him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. He was only 24 years old. So prayers. Prayers for all those who have lost their life recently. And prayers for those that are left behind. It's difficult in this moment not to be near some of the people that we love and might be worried about. So take a moment and we're all going to at the same time say out loud the names of people you wish were right there next to you at your table today. As we name them, they are present with us in our hearts. So I invite you to just call out the names of the people you wish were with you. Anna. Mimi. Sue. David, Carlos, Ralph, Chris, We also want to call to mind the name, the people we cannot name, whose names we do not know, but we know that they need our prayers and God's comfort. So join me with the prayer printed in your bulletins. For those who have lost loved ones, for those who are sick and recovering, for those who are caring for loved ones who are sick and recovering, for those who are caring for persons in medical care, for those who are separated from loved ones, for those who are feeling alone and for those who are helping and are so very tired. For those who are unemployed. For those who are working at home. For those who are out in public working. For those who are struggling to find friends and food and comfort and comfort. those who are afraid. Amen. We pray as Jesus taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against our sins. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver the words of the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. And so I invite Kathy is going to mute. How and now we will take another breath of spirit as our Amen. We know that God sends out our prayers and the spirit, breath of God, is blowing from us outward as the spirit of compassion and presence. And now it is time to praise God and raise our endorphin levels to improve our heart health, both physically and spiritually. So, 
You can dance in your seat. You can dance on your feet. You can dance all over your living room or in your bed. It's time for the Easter season dance party. So if you're gonna dance standing up, I invite you to stand up, go ahead and get ready. If you need to step away from your camera, that's okay. Let's start with this affirmation. So repeat after me. We know Jesus is present among us. We know Jesus is present among us. Even in this very home. Even in this very home. We will not let fear be louder than love. We will not let fear be louder than love. But with glad hearts and rejoicing souls. But with glad hearts and rejoicing souls. We will sing God's praise. We will sing God's praise. For we are Easter people. For we are Easter people. Now let's dance and sing and let our hearts overflow as we send it out to the friends that we miss. And let's see, here we go. We shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. Out and down the hill shall we bring forth before you know the shouts of joy and all the trees of the field. And clap shall clap their hands. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. up let's decide to send some energy out to the world that needs it what message does the world need perhaps you can figure out a way to let more and more people know the message of christ you are not alone i am here you are beautiful in the eyes of god's heart what can we do to create more heartfulness in our household in our family, in our relationships with those that we cannot be with right now? How can we offer our hearts to those who are working so hard right now? How can we tell others that we have hope? Make your own plans today and let me know what you do. Post it on our Facebook page, send it in an email, do it in a phone call. I wanna hear how you are sharing Christ in this world. And so, one of the ways that we share Christ is by sharing out of our bounty, out of the gifts that we have been given. We have some of those gifts here. Some of you have sent in or dropped off um, your envelopes. Others have sent by Venmo or PayPal or Bill Pay and still others may have it at home with them. There's the monetary gifts, there are the gifts of all that you are. What is it that you're willing to offer to God right now? I invite you to, to hold that before you. 
whether it's here in my hands, whether it's still in your hands, whether it's in your heart, just sort of imagine it right before you and let us offer all of this to God. Gracious and loving God, we are so thankful for all that you have given us, for the love from you that just pours down upon us and through us. We pray that you will receive these gifts, these gifts of our hearts, that you will bless them, that you will use them, that more and more people might come to know your love through our presence here in this community, through our impact in this world. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. As we close this time together, remember, God is always with you, no matter what you face, no matter what trials or hardships come your way, God is right beside you, guiding and directing your path. So acknowledge your fear and your worry and know it is as true and holy as any feeling, including joy and hope and love. Take heart. This is the heart of the matter. Amen. And so we have a postlude from Helen we will hear. And then I will let you say goodbye to each other. We'll let you talk. But first we'll hear Helen's postlude. With any luck. Here we go. Unmute everybody so you can say goodbye to folks. Bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.